Hey everybody, Mike Miller with the Herald Times. My buddy, my columnist, our columnist, the People's Columnist, Jeremy Price. Jeremy, what's happening? People's Columnist? Wow, I had no idea. Columnist for the local paper, I think it I think it fits. Anyway, we're here at Assembly Hall, the site of... Uh, man, we did. We went through a few of these games last year. A um, whole lot of good, uh, some not so good. Um, but enough to get a win in a uh, 102-76 win over Austin P. And fortunately um, enough to give us something to write about, which yeah. I was a little bit worried there for a while. <laughs> yeah, we were talking at halftime, not sure really which direction either of us were going to take our stories tonight. Uh, but luckily we both were able to kind of split it up. I took the offense and you took the defense. Offense played really well. Uh, for the most part, turnovers aside, right. outstanding. Defense, uh, we've seen this defense before. It's, yeah. It was not good. Um, let's start with the good. Uh, Three-pointers. There were lots of them. 16 made baskets. There were a whole lot of those. Uh, 15 in a row over a 12-minute stretch in the second half. Um, Indiana's offense was operating in, in high gear today. It was uh, uh, Really, it was an opportunity for them to mask a lot of the uh, deficiencies they had on the defensive end. Uh, but they got the three ball working. Um, they got inside a little bit. They got out in transition a little bit. They took advantage of turnovers mostly, right. which is what that was. I mean, Austin P committed 23 turnovers, and I think Indiana turned that into 33 points off those errors. So lot to lot to lot to be pleased with there especially when you look at yogi ferrell's game what do you have 22 nine assists and six rebounds yeah so, a lot to yeah. be happy if with this there. was a closer game he'd have probably had a triple double but probably didn't need him to yeah offense was uh outside of the turnovers like you said i mean the turnovers was the one hiccup but that aside they still scored 51 points in each half and for a lot of that first half uh it was like transition game was good even the half court was a little stalled at times. Uh, Austin P threw some zone at them probably the first time they've really seen that uh, for an extended time this year. And, Pressed a little too. And yeah, added a little press in there. I didn't think Indiana hit, handled either one of those particularly well by and large, but in the second half, really got the transition game cranked up uh, for the most part. And again, once those threes start falling, I mean, this team is, certainly can mask a lot of deficiencies when the offense is rolling. I mean, we saw that a little bit last year, and, and it's yeah. You could easily argue this team is as good or better than last year's team offensively, at least more diverse with, with the yeah, options it has with Thomas Bryant and whatnot in, in play. So, yeah, offense good, um, now we need mostly, to have a except, for the, except for the turnovers. <laughs> Let's have a talk. Well, the, the defense is a, was a, a weird dichotomy as well, yeah. just in its own right, because they, had, uh, they forced 23 turnovers and they had 14 steals, and both of those numbers are their best numbers in four years, years yeah. since 2011. That was the good side of the defense. <laughs> yeah. The bad side of the defense was it looked a lot like the defense we saw last year. Gave up 40 points in the paint, gave up 48.3% shooting, and that number was over 50% up until the last maybe three minutes mm -hmm. or so. I think it dipped under 50%. Uh, so we saw all the things that we already knew were wrong with the defense show up. I guess sort of it's a question of can this team – you know, obviously they're more active this year. They're creating more turnovers. They're getting more steals, which can produce more offense in its own right. Is that enough to offset the defensive issues when they're not getting those steals and turnovers? Yeah. Points in the paint were shocking, honestly. I mean, gosh, they had 39 points in the first half. Well, actually, yeah, 39 points in the first half. This is after scoring, what, 41 um, yeah. total points Friday night at Vanderbilt. So. Now, I will note that they only had 14 turnovers at Vanderbilt, so it was mm -hmm. clearly a case where they just could not throw the ball in the ocean for whatever reason yeah. at Vanderbilt. And, you know, from what I, I obviously didn't see the game, but from what I heard, it sounded like Chris Horton, who's their best player, really struggled with the length Vanderbilt has, which Vanderbilt has a pair of seven-footers uh, yeah. inside that would obviously present a, a larger challenge than what IU has, although IU went with its big lineup tonight with uh, Thomas Bryant, Max Biafelt, Troy Williams... Uh, all starting and I and at one point in this game they actually had uh, basically four bigs around Yogi Ferrell. I forget mm -hmm. when that was. Early second early half. Second I half because they was. started the second half with Bielfeld, Hartman, Bryant. Um, who was the other? Oh, uh, and Rob Johnson. Rob Johnson. And, and they and swapped out uh, Hartman for Johnson yeah. there, and so they they kind of had the four forward lineup for a bit there. But that being said, they did little to slow down 
important tonight. Yeah, it's like they, 17 they, points. They knew it was coming, and, too. I mean, Horton's a, you know, an all-OVC type player, their leading returning scorer from last year. They knew they knew he was the guy, but it wasn't just him. Obviously, he had the most points for them tonight. Uh, but really, what, 51 of those points came at either, at either the paint or at the free throw line. So it's sort of like, well, how did you not see this coming to some degree, Indiana? Come on. I mean, yeah. this was kind of the point of Austin P. And their offense was to really go down low, get inside, and, and either force fouls or, or, or give it to Ford or Horton under the basket. Yeah, and he got some of those on post-ups. But the yeah. larger problem is the same problem that they had last year, and that was stopping the dribble penetration. It was yeah. just far too easy for uh, Austin P to get in the lane, and a lot of times that created openings for Horton to get the ball, the drop-offs, or, or it was on the ball screen, those type of situations. The flip side of that is... Uh, you got a fair number of those turnovers off of forcing some bad passes once they drove into the lane or, or went baseline or whatever. But the problem is, I mean, Austin P is not at a talent level yeah. of the type that Indiana is going to see going forward starting Thursday and it's then going to, to Maui real. next week. So, it's about to get real. Uh, I don't think you can rely on uh, getting 23 turnovers against those kind of teams, and I don't think you can afford to let them get in the paint and, and score half their more than half their points in the paint or at the free throw line just as easily. Yeah, uh, Creighton comes in here Thursday night. This is not your father's Creighton. Well, that's a dumb way to put it. They're not the Creighton of a few years ago, that's for sure. But they're still Creighton. It's, just, it's a quality program, a lot of player development in that program. Uh, it, it'll be They've a, got some good young freshmen. They too. do. Yeah, they have some freshmen. It's an unproven team, but it's still a right. talented team. Um, and from there, you go straight to Maui where you get Wake Forest and then potentially probably Vanderbilt mm-hmm. and then potentially Kansas. So um, it's about to pick up really quickly here for Indiana. Um, and then after that, you got Duke after you, you get your legs back against Alabama State. <laughs> um, the road ahead gets a lot tougher. But I think really, though, the negatives tonight aside, I think both tonight and Friday night against Eastern Illinois, you know, the positives, you know, those kind of takeaways, they've, they've, they've been in greater supply than a lot of the negatives. I mean, even, even some of these defensive deficiencies have crept back up tonight, you know, giving up 76 points to a team that's picked to finish last in uh, their division in the OVC. You know, there was still enough around them where, you know, you say, all right, it's the second game of the season. I'm still seeing a lot from this team that I think it's definitely better, more diverse, and I, I still totally believe in the ceiling of this team yeah, as long as they can kind of build off of some of these deficiencies. And, and, and like you said, there, there's a bit of a trade-off with some of them too. Yeah, and it's way too early to worry about yeah. pushing the panic button or anything like that. And, again, I mean, we talked about the steals, the turnovers go back to 2011, so – I think that's it's interesting that a lot of these trends are sort of paralleling that 2011-12 team, um, where you've got now you've got Thomas Bryant as that freshman center that, that's trying to kind of change the way that the, the game shaped for this Indiana team the way Cody Zeller did back then. So sort of interesting to to see if that parallel sort of continues throughout the the season. Uh, I don't you know they're by no means the same player, but the impact could be potentially similar. So. We'll see how things go. I mean, it's obviously a work in progress. You're only two games in. Uh, the good news for Indiana, I think the best news for the Creighton game is they're going to be playing that game here. And obviously the home court advantage, uh, that works big time in Indiana's favor in these kind of situations. And if they crank up the offense the way they did in the second half tonight, good luck to anybody keeping up with them. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we thought coming into the year, and they certainly kind of uh, lived up to that tonight. And it seems also that they avoided a uh, pretty uh, – Grizzly injury with Nick Zeisloff to uh, dislocate his right pinky finger uh, midway through the first half. It seemed to hurt the people that saw it a lot more than it actually hurt uh, yeah, Zeisloff. <laughs> very well, I, I, some groans, some some wincing in, in the yeah. uh, crowd, especially over behind us where they could actually see him walking to the bench. Uh, dislocated pinky, not facing the right direction. There, he sat on the bench <laughs> for about six minutes, got it taped up, came back in. I think he was one for three three point range when he left. Came back, hit his next four three pointers. I mean. That was kind of the story tonight. I mean, even an, an ugly dislocation, you know, mangled hand couldn't stop uh, Indiana from shooting the ball tonight. So, no injury, no problem. For now. For we'll, now. Yeah. yeah. So I think it'll probably hurt a lot more tomorrow than it hurt yeah. tonight, though. Too, we'll see so. what his pain tolerance is in a couple of days. We'll For be back sure. out here. Uh, back out here. Uh, what uh, Wednesday to uh, chat with some folks about the Creighton game and uh, see Creighton Thursday night, and from there, it's Hawaii and some uh, some big boy basketball. Yep. So. We'll catch you guys. Thanks. See ya.